in the sound booth right now. And uh, that is normal because there's a couple of minutes still until starting time. But I do want to say some things. I'm going to ask the people that are usually in the sound booth to get to the sound booth. And that way, I won't use my natural amplification, okay? I'll use the actual amplification that the okay. sound system gives us. Today's unusual, and this week is unusual, because something's coming up. What's going to be coming up? So because of that, the whole service is going to be very different this morning. It's going to be strange. It's going to be unusual. It's not going to be exactly like it usually is. And so that's another one of the reasons that I'm starting out early. I'm going to take the first part of this service and try, by God's grace, to get it done in a pretty quick fashion. And the reason is because I want to get to the preaching and the meat of the preaching. I also want to take an ample time this morning and be in prayer. How many have been in prayer for the missions conference already? Great, great, great. When we started our 10 days to pray, I put on Facebook every day prayers that you can pray. And yesterday I gave you a list of things that you can pray through. I'm going to have Gary come and he's going to start us out in prayer. But before he does that, choir, wherever you are, why don't you go and take your place right now as I get ready to tell you, all right? So, are you that bored with the choir? Okay, JR, don't want to do it anymore? You're almost as bad as Andrea and Asia, okay? But we can't, now we can't. And as they're getting ready, we'll do this. And I want to try, Brother Gary, to go through the hymns, maybe one verse at a time, so just one per hymn. I want to try to get through this beginning part so we can get into prayer and really get into some good things that I believe are going to help us with the missions conference. Listen closely as the choir starts us out.
at verse 24. I want to just read one verse to you. I want you to think about this. I got to say something before we keep going. This is an amazing crowd. It really is. And I'm grateful for that. I know that many of you are aware uh, that we're still in this COVID time. But it seems to me that many of you don't care with reference to your worship. And I praise God for that. Mm-hmm. Acts Amen. chapter 20 and verse 24. That's still really hot, Thomas. I'm not sure why. All right. Verse 24. But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself. Let me say that again. Okay. <laughs> Can we look at that again? Amen. We looked at it in Sunday school. I'd like to look at it over and over and over and over again. Because our lives mm. ought not to be dear to us. Amen. Can I just say something today, and I'm, I'm, I'm not really that concerned about its offense, because I believe that the Word of God offends. How many of you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus Christ did not say, I came to bring peace on earth. He didn't say that. What did he say? Not to bring peace. Say it out loud. came not to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. Yep. Yeah. I came to divide families. Yep. I came to tell the truth, and that's going to bother people. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if he did it, should I do that, Cheryl? (laughs) Yes, I should. Should I do that, brother? Should I do that, brother Steve? Should I do that, Tom? Should I tell the truth, even though it might be something that divides? Now, of course, the Word of God says, as long as it lies within you, have peace with all men. But, my friends, read it with me. But none of these things move me. Go ahead and read it out loud if you'd like. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy. And the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. We'll get into this scripture a little bit later, but I want to make this very clear. During COVID, your life ought not to be dear to you. Amen. And if it is, you've got a spiritual problem. Mm-hmm. If you're going around saying, oh, I've got to live for as long as I possibly can, you've got the wrong kind of thinking. Mm-hmm. Amen. We ought to be thinking, if I live, if I die, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm going to obey Him. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to do it in the prescribed Bible way. That's right. And my life be taken if need be. My life be taken if need be. Now, don't go and get drunk every night and decide now that it's okay. That's not what I'm saying. I do realize health is important. But health is not optimal. Health is not the most important thing in life. Health is vital. He does want us to love life and to cherish life. I'm pro-life because of that. But the Word of God never tells us to cherish our lives so much that we start obeying the government and disobeying God. That's right. All right? Do not obey the government to disobey God. You can do both. If the government's in line with the Bible. That's right. And so when and where it's necessary, obey them. All right? <coughs> but where they start to cross the line, hey, who is more important, God or President Trump? God. God. Who's more important, God or Nancy Pelosi? God. God. Who's more important? <laughs> Don't laugh. Who's more important, God or any government law. God. All right, obey the laws. Don't start going around disobeying. But if they say to you, you can't dot, dot, dot in your spiritual exercises with God, you tell them, I can and will, and you put me in jail if you need to, but I'm going to do it anyway. Amen. Don't let your life be so dear to you that you start to disobey the heavenly ones. Right? Let's take up our offerings today, okay? Ushers, come on down if you will, and I'll start praying. Father, I thank you for our church. I praise you, Lord, for such resilient, godly people who understand when the scripture says, my life is not dear to me. 
Lord, my life is not dear to me. Now, my eternal life certainly is. I know I'm going to die one day, and my eternal life certainly will be dear to me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear on this earth, Father. My funds are not dear to me. My things are not dear to me. I give them to you. Lord, we give you what you've asked of us today. We give you our tithes. We give you our extra offerings. We are getting into this missions week, and it's exciting to know what you'll be able to do around the world as we yield ourselves to you. I just ask, oh, Father, that you'll help us to see the value of doing what you say even when it's uncomfortable for us, or whether our society, this old wicked world, has conditioned us to think ways that are not right. They brainwashed us. And I'd ask, oh, Father, that we cease to be brainwashed, and that we would come under you and allow you to set us straight. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Before that message, before I give you that message, I'd like to pray together. I'd like to pray for missions. I'd like to pray for the future of this church. I'd like to pray that God continues to pour down his blessings upon this church. Amen. You know, I look around and I see some people that are kind of new, but are not visitors. You know, that's a good thing. That there's people that are coming that are starting to become part of us. And I love that. I love watching what God is doing. But he'll continue to do that as we ask him to do it. Amen. As he is given that desire by our hearts, oh God, please, please keep working. So give the desire to God. Tell him, Lord, I need this in my life. We want this in our church. Father, move in a special way. So I'm going to start today by asking Brother Michael to guide us in prayer. And then I'd like to have Gary guide us in prayer. And I'd like for Tim to finish up with us right before the message. And then I'm going to give you this very important message. Then we're going to start talking. We're going to start talking through prayer. We're going to start talking through planning and looking at next week. What's next week? Mission's, Mission's Conference. Conference. Mission's Conference. What is Mission's Conference? How many of you have been through a Mission's Conference? All right. How many of you have been through the Mission's Conference here? All right. You know what? There's a ton of people that have it. This is the highlight of the year. I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm actually going to give you a bunch of invitations to the Harvest Party that starts it out on the 10th, which is next Saturday. You're going to see also all week long on the 11th, the 12th, the 4th, 13th, and 14th. Every night is different. The, the very important, I think the most important night is where the men and the women duke it out with one another. <laughs> That's not fair. We're not allowed to hit women. Oh, that's right. <laughs> well, that's why they win every Monday night that we do this. <laughs> We're going to have a great time, though. It's going to be fun. I'll tell you about it. It's not just a bunch of serious stuff. It's a bunch of stuff that gets your mind going, your thinking, your juices. Mike, guide us in prayer. Men, make it sort of free, but make it effective, dear ones. Deal with Father, Lord. Help us to realize, Lord, that our lives should not be dear to us, Lord, because you have us in your hands, yes. Lord. Amen. And you're the one that has things under control, yes. Lord. Amen. Help us to have faith in you and your plan, Lord, moving forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Thank you for your blessings. I pray, God, that this morning, Lord, as we, as a church, as a whole body, as a body, God, we would each as individuals prepare our hearts not only from today's message, God, but the, from, from hearing from you. But God, I pray this morning that you fill Pastor's mouth with the Word of God. Yeah, and Father, as we prepare our hearts for this uh, upcoming missions conference, the Bible says the effectual prayer of a righteous man fails much. And I pray, God, as a church, that we, Lord, would have a righteous prayer as we lift up before the throne of grace, that God, we get your attention, that God, we would uh, humbly uh, submit ourselves to you, Lord, and prepare our hearts that, God, that we can be a blessing and an encouragement to those that are coming. And, Father, may you, uh, may, may you be glorified, may you be lifted up, and, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you that we can clean that old rugged cross Amen. this morning. Amen. For Christ, your Son, died in our place. And we're the whole realm of nature are that's a present far too small. That love so amazing. We love you because you first loved us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Bruce, I want you to take right after this message, I want you to take the first slot in prayer. And we're going to do some more praying. How many have enjoyed the praying? Amen. God has touched my heart with the praying. I thank God for it. Look at Matthew, if you will, chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. As I preach, they're going to put up behind me the picture of the missions conference. They're going to put up the picture of the missions conference. And you'll see in the picture of the missions conference, you see this all over the building. You see it up against the wall over there. You'll see it uh, on the entryways. You see this blue sign that's up everywhere. See this thing? Right there. What? <laughs> what is that right there? What is that? That's a dandelion. Did you know that that is the same as those little yellow flowers? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You know, dandelions are hated the world around. You know that, right? How many of you like just having bunches of dandelions in your yard? Oh, Oscar loves them. I'm surprised you, you know 
The title to the message today is From Useless Weed to Fruitful Seed. And that is the whole theme to our missions conference, The Word to the World. Amen. From Useless Weed to Fruitful Seed. As you go through and study Matthew chapter 13, you're going to find that Jesus Christ is primarily talking about what in that first part of the chapter? Do you know? Soil. Soil. Now, what kinds of soil does he mention? Let me hear it. Four kinds of soil. Number one, what? Stony. The soil of the way. Okay, the soil of the way. The packed down <laughs> soil. All right. Number two? Stony. Stony. Where under that first layer of soil, it's just stone. And the poor roots die. Number four? Thorny. Thorny. And number five? Good. The good stuff. All right? Dandelions are interesting. Did you know that a dandelion, left alone now, that's what they say, they actually say left alone. If you leave a dandelion alone, it will grow a 15-foot root. Goodness. Wow. <laughs> and people think they're pulling that out of their yard. I'll tell you right now, you're not pulling that out of your yard, okay? It's a 15-foot root that has to be poisoned in some way for it actually not to come back. Dandelions fall under the idea that this undesirable thing in my yard needs to be getting out. It needs to be pulled out. It needs to be gotten rid of. And yet, i got to tell you something. Dandelions today have become useful, important. Mom, tell me why. You can eat them. What is one of the things that you regularly buy? Yeah. And what do you drink? Dandy blend. Dandy blend. Dandy blend is found in some of the health food stores. And a good size, a large size of dandy blend will cost you $40. $40. That's quite an expensive coffee to buy, isn't it, David? Quite expensive coffee, but, but this is now becoming important. Do you realize they're starting to make fields of dandies, of these dandelions, because they're becoming a useful seed. Now, what makes the difference between a useless weed and a fruitful seed? Got to get it before it goes fuzzy. What? Have to get it before it goes fuzzy. Well, here's what you've got to understand. It all has to do with the soil, all right? It all has to do with the soil. Now, dandelions can grow in almost any place, and the Word of God is the same. The Word of God is so powerful, it's effective. In fact, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12 tells us of the Word of God that it is like a sword. It is like a sword. Let's look for just a second at what that says. I think it's Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 12. Uh, Nope, 4 and verse 12. Sorry about that. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, I believe it is, isn't it? Yep. Am I right about that? Yep. Okay. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing 15 feet down, <laughs> dividing of the soul of the spirit. Listen, this pierces through some of the toughest stuff. A dandelion seed can pierce through some of the toughest stuff. Now, here I'll tell you this. There are some really hard hearts out there. You'd say hard soil that can be penetrated by the Word of God. It really can. Mm -hmm. But an individual has to make a decision to change their view on what a dandelion or the Word of God really is. Does the Word of God matter to a person? If it doesn't, then he's going to see it as a useless weed. But if you change your mind about the Word of God and you start to realize, I can't live without it, Amen. Right. it becomes a fruitful seed. Right. Those dandelions that you see all over, you'll see them here on the advertisement as well. Start thinking about that dandelion. Start realizing that that thing, think about this dandelion for just a second. It is amazing. There is no need to pollinate a dandelion. 
It is self-pollinating. This is a fact. This is a scientific fact. It pollinates itself. And dozens and dozens of these fluffy little umbrella-like things will take off out of that dandelion. We go, oh, the kids love to do that. Mm -hmm. And you say, stop it. <laughs> You're going to put them all over my yard. Oscar says, bring it on. Bring the kids to my yard. <laughs> Blow them all over the place. Those little tiny umbrellas all have little seeds on them. And they seem to find their way into all kinds of things. They seem to find their way into gutters. They seem to find their way into the crevices of your home. They seem to find your way, their way into every facet of your yard. Tell me if the Word of God isn't similar to that. The Word of God can find growth in some of the weirdest places, in the backwoods of Africa, in the darkest places of the jungle. You what do you find? Dandelions. <laughs> They're all over the place. You say, oh, I thought that was an American thing. Nope, nope. I've lived in some pretty weird places. You know where there are dandelions? Cuba, the Caribbean, down in South America, guess what they've got? Dandelions. <laughs> okay. You know the word of God is much like that. Every nation, every tongue, every backwoods place, every place you can think of. Guess what? Popping up a Christian, popping up a Christian, popping up a Christian. What happened? You put a little seed into the soil of a person who is a bit receptive, even just a bit. The Word of God says this about our faith. If we have the faith of a mustard seed, God can remove mountains Amen. through that kind of faith. So my friends, salvation can come from a heart that is broken and destroyed and rocky and hurt, a person who is bitter, who is broken, who doesn't know anything about anything related to God, who doesn't want him at all, the Holy Spirit can touch that heart and get into that individual with the seed of the Word of God and change that mind forever. Amen. Those dozens and dozens of fluffy umbrella type things, they're amazing. They're like little chimney sweeps. Have you ever seen them? <laughs> the little tiny chimney sweeps, you know? Whenever I think of them, I think of Mary Poppins, you know? Mary Poppins is the chimney sweep. When it comes with this big, huge umbrella type thing, might have a seed on the end of it. I don't know. But successful dandelion seeds and seeding create an environment. This is also a fact. For all vegetation. Did you know that? Dandelions actually create a good thing for all vegetation. Think about that. The joy of the Lord is contagious. Can I tell you that? And it comes through the word of God. All right? Oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is spend the rest of the hour talking about all of the kinds of ways you can sing that song. But joy is contagious. Love is contagious. Peace can be contagious. You go through the entire word of God. The fruit of the spirit is effective. And you know what it does? It makes some people really angry. <laughs> to a point where they'll say things like this. Remember Josh McDowell. You remember Josh McDowell? You guys know Josh McDowell? You heard that name? Very famous gentleman who went around and worked in colleges for a, a number of uh, years and decades ago. And uh, he and a friend of his were driving down the road in their car. And they came up to a stoplight. And Josh and this friend of his were just full of the Lord, talking about him and, and relating it and expressing themselves. They're laughing and enjoying a good time. And this lady next to him knocks on the window. She said, well, she asked him to roll down the window. She's in the car next to him. And so he rolled down the window and she rolled down the window and she said, what right have you got to be so happy? <laughs> I got news for you. There's a lot of people in this world that hate Christians because they're just fine. Yeah. They're not worried about death. 
They don't think about their natural life. They're not concerned about things that others think about and fret about and worry about and uh, put themselves in their house and don't get out. Oh, what, 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 what. Christians don't do that. We don't, we don't care about it. Because we're ready to go to heaven. <laughs> I want to see Jesus. Whenever that comes, praise his name for that. But you, you're hated for that attitude. And you're almost seen as a plague. You're ruining the world. When just the opposite is true. Amen. The people who are bitter and angry and frustrated, you're going to tell me they're the ones that are helping the world? No. But they'll make you think you're the problem. You see how that all works? And why? Because their soil isn't deep. Their roots aren't strong. Their love for the word isn't. Good, here's what happens in verse 15, if you will. Matthew 13 and verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross. And their ears are dull of hearing. <clears throat> their heart is waxed gross. I like that. <laughs> we know what that means in, 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 in old English, but it's kind of funny today we use that term, don't we? Oh, that's gross. How many of you ever said that? <laughs> Uh, Especially the kids. Oh, that's gross. Oh, yeah. Now, that's when you say saying. wax gross, you really start to think, you know, oh, man, what did he pull out of his ear? It must be a Shrek type thing, you know. I mean, <laughs> wow, that's waxy grossness, you know. I mean, basically, what it's saying is that the heart is dull. The heart is broken. The heart is dark. The heart is unclean. It's wax gross. It's gotten to a point where it doesn't want to hear anymore. Don't give me that seed. Don't put that near me. I had a young girl on Saturday when we went out on visitation. Thursday, pardon me, Thursday. We went on visitation with Richard. We went over to Richard. You remember the girl? She was sitting on the swing, and I was talking to her about the Lord, and she said, I believe in God. She said, I just don't believe in going to church or having anything to do with that. That's so funny, isn't it? It's kind of like a husband that says, I love my wife, but I don't do anything she says. Anything. You know, that's the same. So I love God, but I'm not going to do anything he says. Anything, you know. Wow. He tells us to go to church. He presented verse 25 very, very clear that we are to be faithful to our local churches. Amen. And sometimes we'll equate that to one hour a week. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. Would you spend one hour a week with your wife? No. Then why would you do that with God's house? This ought to be the center of your life here. Yes. You know, if we get to a point where we'll stop making church a part of our lives and start making it a priority, hey. what a difference that would be. Yes. That's right. Oh, church, that's part of my life. My friends, Christ is your life. Amen. Amen. He gave you breath to live. He gave you eyes to see. He gave you hands to use. He gave you feet to walk. He is everything. Amen. So the most I can do in being in his house and being with him, I'll do. Same is true with my giving. Same is true with my commodities. Same is true with my time. Same is true with everything I own in my life. Amen. But it all depends on whether you're one of those four kinds of soil. Hey, what would happen? Let me ask you this, uh, Mark. What would happen if I took a bunch of dandelion seeds and just threw them all over this green carpet right here? What do you think? Nothing. Yeah, he's right. Why? Why? It's green, though. You'd think something would grow out of it. What? It's not soil. In reality, it is soil. It's just really, really hard soil, okay? It's conditioned soil, okay? Everything you see is soil. Do you realize that? That pew is soil. Your body is nothing but dirt. We do get that, right? See, God just made us into different things, but every element you see eventually will go back to the soil, soil right? So when you look at this, you say, well, what's the matter with it? It hasn't been conditioned to receive the seed. There's no excrement, which is one of the elements for fertilization. Mm -hmm. That's true. Once you put a dandelion seed out there, it kind of looks like grass after Joe and Brother Oscar are finished mowing it. <laughs> 
But it's not, uh, it, it kind of looks like carpet, but it's not carpet, is it? It's actual grass. And you can throw seeds out there. It'll start to grow. What, what is your point, Pastor? The point is this. What are you? Are you something impossible for seed to grow in? Have you become so hard that you say, I'm not going to listen to that. I don't want really to hear that. Stop talking to me about God, about who he is. Oh, my friends, how in the world could we say that to the maker of the universe? It's amazing. Don't we do that? We do that. I don't talk. I don't really want you to talk to me about those things. Why? Their ears have waxed gross. That's why. So go with me, if you will, right to the beginning of Matthew 13. You can see this. The same day when Jesus is out of the house, he sat by the seaside, sitting out there contemplating. Great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake unto many things, spake unto them many things in parables. What are parables? It's stories. You like stories? How many of you like stories? Well, let me tell you one, okay? <laughs> we had a garden this year, Brother Jay. Did you have any gardens? Jay, tell me about your banana plants. You got some banana plants, don't you? They're beautiful, 15 foot tall, and they don't produce. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. They're 15 feet tall, and they don't produce anything. <laughs> What's the matter with those banana plants? Same as you and I. Sometimes Christians will have a seed, bring up something, and then there'll be no fruit. You know a person that gets saved and has no fruit? You ever heard of that? Oh, they're all over the place. People who have decided they're not going to do what God wants them to do. These people are listening. Many of them didn't want to do what he wanted them to do. When he sowed some seeds, fell by the wayside, verse 4, as he talks about this sower, the fowls came and they devoured them up. What was the first thing? The wayside, right? You know, sometimes with reference to the wayside, we're not understanding, like, almost a deer in the headlights. Mm -hmm. We listen to the Word of God. I'll get up here on Sunday morning, and there are times, Dad, tell me this isn't the case. You've got your message all planned out. You're ready to go. And you give the first point. No? No, that's right. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you give your first point, your first idea, your first introduction. Listen to this. And you look out across the crowd, and everybody's going, <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. <laughs> so you spend 45 minutes talking about your introduction. You say, now the rest of the message is A, B, C, let's pray. You know, I mean, that happens sometimes. Why? When people don't have their minds engaged to hear it, yep. then we hardly get anywhere. Are you being Andrea today, Mikey? <laughs> no, he's tired. Poor Mikey. Okay, there's an example right there, Mikey, of what we're talking about. Hard soil, the wayside soil is that kind of soil. Second, as you look at this with me, if you will, the Word of God says the second kind is this sort of layer of soil on top of stone, on top of rock. How many of you have ever been up to New Hampshire? Anybody? Okay. Oh, good, good, good. Up in New Hampshire, there's a guy on the side of a mountain. What is his name? The old man on the mountain. And the old man on the mountain has a nose like a seacrest nose, okay? It's kind of sharp. <laughs> but this guy is natural. No one etched him out or anything, but he's just this old guy, looks like this old man, his face coming out of the side of a mountain. Now, if you take a dandelion and throw it in his eye, it's probably not going to grow. Why? Because there's probably a little bit of dirt in there over time it's gathered, but after a little bit, it's going to do what, Ken? It's going to shrivel away. You and I have to get to a point where we realize God's work the seed is not the problem. It's the heart that's the problem. As you go on, you'll see in verse 12, it, the word of God tells us, pardon, go on, verse 7. Some fell upon thorns, and the thorns sprung up, and they were choked, and then the others fell into good ground. Now, what does he say about all this? Go to verse 18. You ready? Here's what it says. Hear ye, therefore, the parable of the sower. Verse 19. 
When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received not the seed, which received the seed, but by the way, so I received it, but it, it didn't do anything. Verse 20. But he that received the seed is to stony places. The same is he that heareth the word. And right away, Anon means immediately. And Anon with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth, but, but dureth for just a little while. For when a tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he's offended. Also that received all, he also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, and the care of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. But he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word, understandeth it, which also beareth root, bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. What are you doing? Here's the question, Charlie. And we're done with the message today. What are you doing with the seed? Mm -hmm. Why would it be? What are you talking about, Jimmy? <laughs> Mommy said that she would eat a bandit Oh, okay. Well, they're good. <coughs> what are you doing with the seed? I hope you could know that you could eat it. Do you guys know that if you eat the word of God, it's going to be effective in you? That's a good answer, actually, Amy. Jimmy said, what are you talking about? Eat a dandelion. I want to eat a dandelion. Well, they make them into salads and all kinds of things. What happened here? It was useless. But it became fruitful. Why? Your decision to eat it, Amy. <laughs> Your decision to consume it made all the difference. What are you doing with the seed? Thank you for that illustration. <laughs> what are you doing with it? The gospel of the Lord can be thrown out among all peoples. Amen. You can do that with the seed. You can consume it. You can consume the fan, the 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 um, pardon me, the, the plants that are part of it. You can believe it. You can take it into you. So Christian, do that. What are we doing? Are we selfishly holding on to the seed? That can be done too. But ultimately, unsaved, listen to me. It is valuable to be brought to a place of not just receiving it, but having it change. Amen. How many of you know that when you eat food, it changes you? All right. Very true. Very good. It also produces sounds, right? It produces sounds. It produces muscles. It all depends on the quality of your food. All right? My, my mother-in-law says, garbage in, garbage out. <laughs> That's what happens. Garbage in, garbage out. If you take in garbage, you're going to produce garbage, okay? Yeah. The same is true with the perfect, pure, precious Word of God. Amen. If throughout the day you're eating everything else but the Word of God, you're going to produce everything else but the Word of God. If the Word of God is your central point, if the Word of God is your everything, what a difference that will make. Yeah. Yeah. Keep out of your head and close your eyes. Just think for just a second. Lord, what am I doing with your Word? <laughs> 